we will all offer the prayer of meditation. Father of blessings, wisdom, knowledge, understanding, prudence, please give this to us. And today, everywhere we go, as your children, may we be victorious. May we be a blessed man who gives profit to many people. According to the word, we believe our descendants will do more well. For our country, we believe that we will be patriots. And in order to fulfill your will, we believe we will become instruments of righteousness. With victory, may we give you glory. In Jesus' name, we thank you and bless. Amen. Please repeat after me, sheep. So the blessings are in front of you. God says, says they're there. We can't see them. And this is where we feel the conflict. But the blessings actually are in front of you. But to make those blessings mine, James chapter 4, verse 10, this is all we have to do. Then you would see them. But in reverse, oh, my feelings are hurt. You know, my pride's been hurt. And this is when you don't take the blessings and you take the disasters. So when you go out, it's filled with my blessings. But instead of taking the blessings, you keep carrying away the disasters. And then after a few years, you say, oh, I've been ruined. You know, my children aren't doing well. Oh, we started to do well. But then, you know, and you say all these, uh, you know, other things. And I, but you took those things. So, you know, if on the street you see someone, you know, rifling through the trash can, you know, that's what you do. And then you take that home. And so your house is filled like a trash can. That's how you live. And then you're, you mistake, you're mistaken yourself and you say, oh, I didn't live like that. I've lived so fervently. Let's read James chapter 4, verse 10. Humble yourselves in the presence of the Lord and he will exalt you. Amen. So after this word, it says, who are you to judge others? It's a scary word. Let's read verse 11 and 12. Do not speak against one another, brethren. He who speaks against a brother or judges his brother speaks against the law and judges the law. But if you judge the law, you are not a doer of the law, but a judge of it. There is only one lawgiver and judge, the one who is able to save and to destroy. But who are you who judge your neighbor? Amen. So this is what the fake denominations look like. The fake churches without Christ. So because they disobey God's word, they're all ruined. And then in verse 10, it says to humble yourself. So there's no one in this world who humbles themselves. What is it to humble yourself? It's to, it's to receive blessings. You know, when I go out on the street, there's so many blessings, but no one does those things. They all go the way of ruin. You want to do well. The way to do well is to humble yourself, but no one does this. Even though you receive this word and you're sent out, oh, I'm upset. Oh, my pride's hurt. Oh, that's filthy. That's unfortunate. And you keep going up. You go the way of ruin and disasters. And then you say, oh, I'm living a life of faith. You, you're mistaken to thinking you're receiving blessings. That gets stored up. And that's when that problem explodes. You know, when dust, when dust is all stacked up, then you can't live there. We keep going that way and yet we don't know. So through us, through our lives, God wants us to show others. He wants us to show that we're doing well. Matthew chapter 5, verse 16. Then why is it that God tells us to lower ourselves? It's when we lower ourselves, that's where the blessings are because Jesus lowered himself. So whoever we meet, whether it be at work or when you're walking on the street, you'll meet someone. When you meet someone, you always want to go above them, the way of ruin. You don't want to go down low. Why is it that you attend church, but everyone's ruined? You receive disasters and curses, you don't get salvation because you don't know how to humble yourself. And that's why they're fighting amongst themselves and dividing and making denominations. If you humble yourself, there are no denominations. Let's say this is high, but if this side is low, everything rolls down. Everyone's gathered down here and you become one. 
So Christ makes you become one. Why do spouses fight? Oh, who are you? Who are you? Until you fight. But if you say, I'm your slave, there's nothing to fight about. And so this gospel, to make it mine, says, do not fear, don't be afraid. These incredible promises, it starts with becoming a slave. Without forced at repentance, you can't become a slave. That's Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10. Uh, verse 8. So if you're not a slave, there's nothing below. So then that means there's nothing in the middle, there's nothing at the top. So you, you're the one that goes the way of ruin. And then you say you believe in Jesus. Who does this? It starts with the pastors. If, if they're raised up, the pastors will go there. But if they're not recognized, they won't go there. They're supposed to be at the lowest place praying. They don't do that. They want to be recognized. That's the Pharisee, Sadducee, someone who deserves wrath. We shouldn't curse them. It's, I'm the same. I do that. So my place, the lowest place where you're treated like a beggar, no one goes there. That's where you live, but no one goes there. So you want to receive blessings today, but you won't go to that place. Wherever you go, you continue to meet people to receive blessings. But when you meet people to receive blessings, you say, oh, I'm not going to go lower than you, lower than you, and so you go the way of ruin. If you're already upset, it's because, so you keep going up where it's ruined, and yet you don't know. And that's why your children all the, go the way of ruin. Because I do the things of ruin, it all goes down to my children. Numbers chapter 14 verse 18, it goes three and four generations. And then you do those things and then you're mistaken to thinking that you've done good things. But God says, where it's quiet and clean and low, where no one else is there. You know, if you meet two people, if you meet another person to say, I'm the worst, even if you meet 10 people to say, I'm the worst, then you'll succeed, you'll receive blessings. But those people with problems, you see, they have their, their dog pride, They have so much pride. And because of that, they act like they're so smart, their thoughts. So whoever you meet today, when you meet them, no matter how worthless they seem, if you say, I'm worse than you, I have more sin than you, and when you see those people's faults and to repent of it as mine, that's how you become humbled. So if you're humbled, that's without sin. Jesus, he was humbled. Let's... Let's find Philippians chapter 2, verse 7 to 8. Jesus was lowered and lowered and lowered, even though he was the same as God. And he died to the, uh, he obeyed to the point of death. If you do this, then you'll receive blessings and power. But you refuse to go to the point of death. As soon as you're a little bit tired, you go off, do something else, you scheme. But God says, give up all of your heart. Without four step repentance, we can't give up our hearts. But give up all of your heart, revive your conscience. And then he says to give up your life but you don't give up your lives. You don't even give up your heart properly, but you don't give up your life at all. And then you say, why don't I have answers? If there's uh, an electrical wire that comes to your house for 220 volts, but one of the wires isn't there, You know, some people only have two wires connected, not one. And then you say, why am I not doing well? To meet God, to revive your conscience, even though you revive your good conscience and your pure conscience, if you don't revive that kind conscience, then your faith is shipwrecked. It collapses. 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 19, because you've never heard of this sermon, you haven't even ever revived your conscience, and then you attend church. If you attend a church like that, as time goes, you're ruined. Which pastor, elder, deacon? You try it. Without this mystery of Christ, it's a matter of time. They're all ruined. Already they're ruined. And in the future, they'll be more ruined. And yet they don't know. It's so sad. Who does this? It's the pastors in front. It's the fa fake pastors. Whether it's in Korea or the world, this mystery of Christ, which is something that God has given, it's the promise of blessings. But anyone who slanders this, whether a pastor or any, they're all ruined. This is what God has recorded. So it's inescapable. But if you do forced repentance, you live. There was this evangelist who never got married her whole life. And all her life, you know, she was a, an evangelist. And when she was about to die, she was lying in the hospital. And she was suffering so much. And she called us. I went there with some of the saints. God said, you've cursed Pastor Park. If you don't ask for forgiveness, you'll be sent to hell. She was so afraid. She called me who she cursed and asked for forgiveness. We went to the hospital. That's what God does. 
So after slandering those people that just let that remain, it's not that they're completely ruined. Their children are completely ruined. And yet these idiots don't know this. They, they scorn the Bible. They scorn Almighty God's Word. You say you're not scorning this, but you're scorning the Word to be humbled. You don't listen. And so you, instead of receiving blessings, you receive curses and you don't realize. Now let's realize. And if you realize you have to act completely, you have to do forced debt repentance to make up mine. So the whole day He wants to give you blessings, but you keep taking curses. Today, let's get rid of that simple life. Um, Philippians chapter 2, verse 7 and 8. But emptied himself, taking the form of a bondservant, and being made in the likeness of men. Being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Amen. So this is fulfilling forced at repentance, the resurrection, by dying on the cross. So what we have to know, Galatians chapter 6, verse 14, is the Lord Jesus Christ and the cross. That's all we have to boast of. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 2, the Lord Jesus Christ and the cross. To only know that, Galatians chapter 6, verse 14, to only boast of that. Other than this, if you boast of anything other than this, you'll be ruined. So these big fake churches we hear in Korea, how they're being ruined. And soon we'll hear these other fake churches being ruined. If you don't quickly realize and repent, God, he makes you ruined or in order. And he, you receive all filthy shame. But there are idiots who follow after that. These idiots who want to receive disasters and curses. Why follow after that? Why are you so happy to go the way of ruin? You ruin all of your household. God says he will do it. You think churches aren't ruined? Do you know how many fake churches there are? If you go to Europe, all those churches are ruined. You see if any are doing well. In Europe, these, these huge churches that have been built, you know, now they're selling them as pubs because they don't have money to maintain them. So they're sold as pubs, as restaurants. They just sell them off cheaply. What is this? Korea is the same. And all they do is bring curses upon God. And in the Soviet Union, all those churches, they're, they're pubs or motels. So what is it we, we're we going to do? How am I going to live today? And you still have those demons where you can't say amen, you're going to live like that? Because you don't humble yourself. That's why you can't say amen to God's word. How proud and full of yourself. Those people who don't say amen, you, you see them. They and their children receive filthy disasters and curses. They won't say amen to God's word, and yet they don't know. They don't know that it's them that's that's ruining themselves. And they don't just ruin themselves. Everywhere they go, they ruin. You pray for them a lot and you watch. You see in how long it is before they're ruined. And he shows you exactly. So then what happens? Jesus, he's the same as God, yet he lowered himself. He he humbled himself to the to the point of giving up his life. So how was he humble? Because he didn't have sin. So you and I, whoever we meet, whether you meet two or ten people, out of all of those people to say I'm the worst, if you repent the most, that is the way to receive blessings. That is the way of humility. So then you would take the blessings. But you say, I'm better than you. I'm better than you. That's the way of ruin. So you live like that and then you're ruined. You know, there are people here who are suffering a lot because of a few dollars. Because of a few dollars. Why? You know, some people, that wouldn't even be someone's um, meal's worth of money. But why are you suffering because of that? Because that's how much you haven't humbled yourself. At the lowest place, that's where all the blessings are prepared. It's through Jesus that we receive blessings. It's through Christ when we get to Jesus. And if we're humbled to Jesus, Jesus connects us to God and he gives us all blessings. But we won't go down to that place. So the blessings are put in front of you and yet you can't take them. And you keep taking disasters and curses. And yet if you are close to someone like that, then that's why you're ruined. Let's live properly. The blessings are in front of me. But it's because you don't lower yourself that you can't take them. Don't become someone like that. So if you have problems that aren't being released, 
It's because you hold on to your own stubbornness. You're, you act like you're better. You're so high and you don't lower yourself. That's what ruins you, you and your children. And yet that's what you're doing. If you come to the Lord according to your feelings, until your feelings are uprooted, that mood is uprooted, you and your children will suffer. Until that's uprooted, until then, God won't give you blessings. So the blessings are in front of you. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 15. At the same time, disasters and curses, your children being ruined, that's in front of you too. So whoever we meet, whatever we do, it's all inside of there. So the, the blessings and, and curses are there together. So if I go low, I take the blessings. If I go up high, I'll take the curses. So today we have to humble ourselves. How? There's nothing but repentance. If you do force your repentance, no matter how much you try to go high, you'll become low. So how much are you a fake hypocrite? If you're told to do forced debt repentance, you don't, repent, you don't repent properly. If you repent, are you bold as a lion or are you despicable like a mouse? You become bold as a lion. So then whatever you do, you're filled with confidence. When anyone sees you, they see that you're right. But because you're told to repent, you just become intimidated. Lacking confidence and repenting are different. Being lacking confidence is being double minded. You become so filthy. But if you repent, you seem low, but you become sharp and you become so strong and powerful because you have wisdom and knowledge. And so you're scary. And yet you can't discern between this. Some people are like, Oh, if you believe in Jesus, you can't even say anything to your employees. Who says that? If you're bold as a lion, why can't you say anything? If anything, saying something, that's being more righteous. So if you're doing right and you see someone doing wrong, to say, you should do this. You say it with assurance. But if you have demons, well, I don't know if maybe you'll do well. Matthew chapter 5, verse 37, that's someone who is evil. So being humble, what is that? It's to be bold. It's to be assured. It's to make yourself do well and others do well. That is being humble. So when you're told to be humble, it's not to, you know, feel intimidated and to slink around. No. That's, that's someone who's just lacking confidence. That's not being humble. If you're humble, you're bold. So being humble is to be bold. But you can't discern between that. In other words, you haven't repented. If you repent, you become bold. And you have, you have assurance. And when you see someone doing the wrong thing, you say, oh, if you do this, you'll do well. You know, you tell them how to do well. So who won't be thankful then? What are you and I? God says the blessings are in front of you. If you humble yourself, you'll take them. But you keep taking the curses. From today, let's be humbled. If you're humbled, you take all good things. The Lord at this time, He wants us to do well. So it's not hard. All we have to do is humble ourselves. Whoever you meet, to say your wrongs are mine, and if you repent and you humble yourself, what is it that te- what is it that He teaches us? He teaches us what to repent of and to what to- and to be humbled. So there's no enemies. They're all my teachers. They're all giving me blessings. But you don't see them as teachers. You don't have thanksgiving. Oh, I've met someone filthy. And you spit on them. And that's why you spit on the blessings and you take the curses. Romans chapter 2 verse 6. So according to your actions, he repays you. And that's why we can't take the blessings. And God, when he sees us, he sees us taking the curses. And he feels so regretful about that. So you say life is hard. There's nothing as easy as, as life, as succeeding, as doing well. Why do you keep saying it's hard? It's because you haven't repented and you have demons. Even with your spouse. You know, if you're not accepting your spouse's things, how can you accept other people's things? You see people who don't do well, they don't even accept their spouse's things. Why? Because of what their ancestors have passed down. I can't win over this with my strength. You end up just divorcing and saying, I can't accept it. That's how evil you are. So with repentance, let's humble ourselves. And so because I'm like that, your children end up divorced. If I'm at the point where you're saying, oh, I can't live with that person, 
with my spouse, then your children, they just end up separated. So you pass this down, and yet you don't even know you're, you're shameless. So when the Lord tells us to humble ourselves, it's not to lack confidence. If you're lowered, then you see things properly. You change failure to success. I do well, you make others do well. So wherever you go, you have popularity. You receive praise from men. Let's all receive this from today, from today, from now. Let's receive this all. Then if I do this, I do well and my children do well everywhere I go. So Pastor Park, if I go someplace, I'm always more lower. So I'll, move, I'll you know, carry something for them all. Or I'll clear something away. Why? Because I'm worse. And when you do this, that's when you receive blessings. And you give profit to those or people around you. What am I like? Even with your spouse, even though you're one body, can you, if, you're, if you can't stand them already, you can't do well. If you're like, I can't stand them, then your children will end up separated. And that's why your children, they get married and they divorce. These fake Christians, they have so much divorce. Why? You can't, if you hate your spouse, then your children, they have to separate because they've become more evil. Let's make them one, starting from me to become a slave. So if you're a slave, then you're raised up to become a friend. If you're a friend with God, what won't work out? With, if you're a friend, everything works out. And so when I come here and pray, what do I do? I quickly go down low. Then it's God who raises me up. He's like, oh, friend, you've come. That's when I stand up. And that's when workings happen. But what, what do you, you do? You, you refuse to become a slave and you try to go straight up to God. And that's why you fall down. Now, let's look down towards the low place. So today, things that upset you, that's what gives you blessings. But they're not things that are, that are bad. If I repent, then I become humble. Then God raises me up. And then you receive all your desires. So all those unfortunate things are blessings. They'll change. So without four-step repentance, you cannot become humble. It's... You know, the theory seems simple, but it doesn't work because you don't do four-step repentance. The churches, they don't do sermons about humility because they don't know the way. So if, if, if a pastor is high, that's a fake church. If you attend that church, you'll receive disasters and curses. The prodigal son at the beginning seems to do well. When he's got his money, he's going out, he seems to do well. He's got money, he's got friends, he seems to do well. Within a few years, he's a beggar. Why do you go to those places and say it's a church? Why attend those places? When that, past, when that church's pastor is at the lowest place and meets Jesus, that's a true church. So how do we become humble? It's only by forced at repentance. So you can only meet him who is without sin if we're without sin. So to be humble, whoever's, whatever person you meet, their sin to say it's mine. That's how you become humble. Then you won't be upset. They're not an enemy. It's for me to repent and for me to receive blessings. If you can't love your enemy, enemy, he, if that person makes you, if you don't know that that person's making you repent to receive blessings, if you don't know this, then you can't receive, that, that means you don't have faith. So if you don't have faith, how can you receive salvation? Let's find Matthew chapter 5 verse 44. So these fake denominations, they make normal people into enemies and that's why they're ruined. Those people who attend those churches, you see how they die. They're all ruined. So if you have someone you hate, an enemy, then you'll go to hell. It's disasters and curses. When you repent and say, that person sins are mine, then it all changes to blessings for me. So the father, why is it, you know, he gives you blessings. Why is it you see those enemies and, 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 and you don't love them? There's no one who will disadvantage you. Why? Because if you repent and you become worse than that person, then God helps me, not others. So there's no disadvantage. So I have no worries. I have no disadvantage. I've, I've got nothing. And that's why I live so peacefully. But someone, someone said to me at a restaurant, oh, one of the employers said, Pastor, how is it you're always so happy? Because God does that. So I thought to myself, I'm worse than that, that employee. Those things, there's so much blessings in front of you. But why is it we see it as enemies? 
So it's when you don't have enemies and you're filled with thanksgiving, that is faith. When you talk about faith, it's to love your ne- enemy. That's faith. Let's read verse 44 and 45. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be sons of your Father who is in heaven. For he causes his Son to rise on the evil and the good, and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. Amen. So, are there enemies in front of me today or not? If you do have enemies, then you don't have faith. You're going to hell. You'll receive disasters and curses. Three and four generations will be ruined. So, if you repent to the point where you can love your enemy, then you have blessings. A thousand generations receive blessings. You give profit to others. So, everywhere you go, those two things are in front of you. But what do we do? Oh, it's such. It's so unfortunate. Then you'll, f- you'll fall, you'll receive curses. It's only good things in, in front of you. So it's always thanksgiving. You have to do four step repentance to have thanksgiving. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 20. So today, let's only receive miraculous blessings. No matter what happens, if we do four step repentance, we'll receive miraculous blessings. Let's all receive this. From today, let's receive. Let's receive it all. Let's all receive. Let's close our eyes quietly. So, who is it that you cannot stand in your heart? You, it's mostly your spouse. And then your, your in laws. It's within your household. You can't stand them. Within your, you know, your in laws. And it's those who were most close to you. That's who you hate. In other words, you hate yourself. If this could happen by human strength, we wouldn't need the blood of Christ. But because it doesn't happen by our own strength, those things we can't fix that we know we shouldn't do with the blood of Christ, let's fix it. So every time you come up against something, you're knocking up against something, and you have an enemy, that person's brought blessings. If I repent of that person's sins as mine, then I'll receive blessings. If I don't repent, then I'll take curses, I'll take disasters. Let's realize properly. So every time you meet someone, whoever it is, to say thank you, whoever it is, it's thanksgiving. Why? Because they've brought blessings. But if you can't stand them, And if you turn away, then instead of taking the blessings, you'll take the curses. Is this Amen? So from today, let's fix this. But it, it's only fixed if you repent. So let's close our eyes. Yesterday, the day before, a month ago, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, where, who is it that I, when I meet them, I can't stand them? We have to forgive that all. Until you ask for forgiveness, you and your children can't do well. If you store that up, That disaster, that bomb will explode and you'll be lying in hospital. You'll, you'll make a problem. It's after an accident. You meet that person, it's because they're hating someone. If you let that hatred remain and you're just not repenting, when that gets stored up, it will explode. So, which bomb do you want exploding today? What disaster do you want exploding to your children? Or do you want to receive blessings? You have to receive one or the other. So, whoever it is, to have a heart of love. They seem like an enemy, but they've brought blessings. Who you hate the most, who seems to be the worst enemy, they're the ones that bring the true blessings. If you repent of their sins as, you, as mine and you, you're humbled, then blessings will come. My children will be blessed. Let's all receive these blessings. Let's all receive these blessings, Father. We didn't know so much. The lowest place, the blood of Christ, forced at repentance. Without this, we cannot go down. But every time we see someone we cannot stand, we say, Oh, I don't want to even see you. You're an enemy. So, someone who hates themselves hates their spouse. How simple were we? Why is it that spouses are one, but we hate them so much? Why is it the right arm hates the left arm? Why does the left arm hate the right arm? Why is it that we want to poke our left eye or right eye? And may we end this life of simpleness. Whoever we meet, that person's brought blessings to me. When we repent of their wrongs as mine and to become more humble and to realize it's for me to receive blessings. When we become humble, may we receive the blessings of being raised up. The saints at Busan First Church, by our lives. 
May we show others our lives to give you glory. Today, may we surely be victorious. In Jesus' name, we thank you and bless. Amen. <laughs>